the city has a the city has a proactive communication approach in which the project team will provide project updates to you using different methods, including letters post and posting information on the city's website. Well, before we, uh, we go any further, I'd just like to uh, introduce uh, the team there. Uh, they're also, uh, uh, so yes, yeah, so I'm Luc Marino. I'm the program manager for design and construction for the city's infrastructure services group, uh, the design and construction branch. And I have with me uh, Awesome from her project delivery team. Uh, you see he's waving here. Uh, awesome is the project manager for this project and has been uh, working diligently on this one to move the design forward with obviously the technical expertise from our design consultants, Robinson Consultants, and Daryl, you've heard Daryl talking already. So Daryl and Lisa are from our consulting team, which already uh, the guy has been to, you know, producing the design and the drawings and the specifications for this contract. And we are here today to uh, present uh, what the plans are and obviously hear comments, feedbacks from your end. So I want to uh, first uh, thank you guys for attending. Uh, it's actually turned out to be a fun, nice, bright, sunny evening. So Surely appreciate the time uh, you're taking up your uh, little life and be with us uh, today. And uh, with that said, I guess I'll uh, return it back to you, Daryl, and we can run through the presentation. And after the presentation, uh, by any means, uh, we'll run through a quick Q&A session. Thank you, Luke, for the introductions. I went straight into it. Um, okay. The purpose of this online public information session is to present the detailed design, receive feedback, identify the next steps in the process, and inform residents of the future construction activities. We will be receiving your comments by phone or email until July 12th. Contact information is provided on the last slide on the city and on the city's project website. At the end of the presentation, we'll be taking questions. Please feel free to type your questions into the chat throughout the presentation. In this presentation, I will present the project limits, some background information on why this work is being done, an overview of both the underground and surface works, and go through the drawings. This presentation will focus on the road reinstatement, but if there are any questions about specific areas of underground work, I do have the detailed design drawings with me. Project limits. Project limits on this project is Wilmot Avenue from Winston to Churchill, Winona Avenue from Scott Street to Richmond, Elm Grove from Winona to the Dead End, and Picton from Winona to the Dead End. The existing water main and sanitary sewers being replaced were constructed in the 1930s and are being replaced due to the, their age and condition. Existing storm sewer was built in the 1980s and is in good condition and therefore will be protected, except two lengths on Winona near Elm Grove will be replaced due to an underground conflict. The water main sanitary sewers will be replaced throughout the project, except for on Picton Avenue, where only the water main will be replaced. The sanitary and water service laterals will be replaced between the main and the city property line where the sanitary sewer or water main is being replaced. Two sections of storm sewer on Winona from Elm Grove to Ashton will be replaced due to a sanitary sewer conflict at Elm Grove. Old road, road reconstruction, including installation of wider concrete sidewalks throughout the project area except Picton Avenue, which will undergo, undergo trench reinstatement and milling and paving outside the trench reinstatement. It will improve public safety with installation of traffic calming measures, including intersection narrowing, raised intersections, raised pedestrian crosswalks, and speed humps throughout. Wilmot Avenue. Wilmot will be upgraded with traffic calming measures to conform with the city's new 30 km an hour speed limit design guidelines, which will include speed humps, curb extensions, and a raised pedestrian crosswalk. 
Sidewalks on the north side will be widened from 1.8 meters to 2 meters. Existing 10.5 meter pavement width will be narrowed to 8.5 meters with localized 7.0 narrowings. Full road reconstruction from property line to property line will occur. Wire main and sanitary sewer will be replaced throughout the project limits, including replacements of services to property lines. New parking restrictions will be in place at, at and opposite all curb extensions. Winona Avenue. Winona will be upgraded with traffic calming, me calming measures to conform with the city's new 30 km an hour speed limit design guidelines, which will include speed humps, curb extensions, raised pedestrian crossings, raised intersection, and a raised crossing slash cross ride at Scott Street. 1.8 meter sidewalks will be continuous on both north and south side from Richmond to Scott. Existing 9.0 meter pavement width will be narrowed to eight and a half meters with a localized seven meter narrowing. Water main and sanitary sewer will be, will be replaced throughout the project limits, including replacement of services to property lines. Storm sewer will be replaced from Elm Grove Avenue to Scott Street. New parking restrictions will be implemented at and opposite proposed curb extensions, as well as on both sides of the roadway between Ashton Avenue and the Whitby Avenue Elm Grove intersection. Elm Grove Avenue. Elm Grove will be upgraded with traffic calming measures to conform with the city's new 30 km an hour speed limit design guidelines, including a curb extension. A new 1.8 meter, meter sidewalk will be installed on the south side. The six, existing 6.7 meter pavement width will be widened to a 7 meter width. Water main and sanitary sewer will be replaced throughout the project limits, including replacement of services at property lines. New parking restrictions will be in place at and opposite of the curb extensions. Picton Avenue. Picton Avenue will undergo transferring statements and milling and paving of asphalt outside the transferring statement. Wire main will be replaced throughout the project limits, including replacement services to property lines. No new parking restrictions will be implemented. Now I'll get to the fun part, which is the actual drawings themselves. Before I dive into the actual drawings, I just want to show you what the symbols mean in the drawings, uh, so I don't explain it as we move throughout. When you see a solid green turquoise circle, that's a proposed new location of a hydrant. If it's a hollow green circle, that's protection of an existing hydrant. The shaded gray area represents a sidewalk, and the bu uh, bump outs on the sidewalk or curb lines are the narrowings of the roadway. And these symbols here represent the speed humps in the roadway themselves. And the last symbol is when it's hatched on either side, that means it's raised. So this is a raised crosswalk. So I'll start on Wilmot Avenue. So working Wilmot Avenue will commence at Winston Avenue intersection. So we'll be installing a new hydrant at this location. A new two meter sidewalk will be installed on the north side. Once you note that the back of sidewalk will be approximately at the location of the middle of the existing sidewalk. So the homes on the north side will gain more green area. We'll have a narrowing near Winston with a speed hump at this location. In the middle, we'll have another narrowing and a speed hump and a new hydrant. Near Churchill, we'll have another narrowing. And at Churchill itself will be a raised crosswalk.
So now for Winona, we'll be tying into Scott Streets uh, at Winona. At the intersection here, we'll have a raised crossing slash cross ride for cyclists and pedestrians. We'll be protecting the newly built hydrant at the intersection itself. We'll have 1.8 meter sidewalks on both sides, continuous. We'll have a speed hump just west of Ashton. We just tie into Ashton for underground work and shave and pave a little bit of the area. Between Ashton and Elm Grove, the road is narrowed to seven meters, so there'll be no parking at this location, which is new from existing conditions. We'll have a road narrowing between Ashton and Elm Grove on the north side and one on the south side, which basically gives a chicane effect, effect trying to slow down traffic. On Elm Grove, we have a new 1.8 meter sidewalk on the east side. I say is Elm Grove will be widened from 6.7 meters to 7 meters, to, which is our minimum standard for road width. In the middle, we'll have an uh, intersect, we'll have a narrowing, and a new hydrant will be located at the end of Elm Grove. To the east Elm Grove, we'll have a raised crosswalk at this location here. Moving east, at the intersection of Picton, Winona, this will be a raised intersection. Again, in Picton, we're just replacing the water main itself. So after replacing the water main, we'll just be shaving and paving the top lip of asphalt so it looks new. And a new hydrant uh, at, the end of the, at the dead end of Picton. As we keep going on Winona, we'll be protecting the existing hydrant that was newly built and installing a raised crossing at Richmond Avenue. Lead pipe replacement. Due to the age of homes in the area, you may be serviced with lead water pipes. Wherever water main is being replaced, water services will be placed between the main and the property line as part of this project. Replacement of the water services on private property is the responsibility of the homeowner. If you would like to have your private side of your lead service replaced, you will have to hire an independent contractor to complete this work. The City of Ottawa has a program to help subsidize the cost of replacement of lead pipes. More information about lead water services and the City's lead pipe replacement program can be found at the following link. Project schedule. The detailed design of this project is, is expected to be completed in the fall of 2022. A second public information session will be held in 2023. Construction is, is expected to begin in 2024, pending budget approval. The work is expected to take approximately two years to complete. This positions the project for success as there will be an opportunity for overarching coordination work to take place, including development work, community updates and information sharing, and give ample time for approvals such as budget. Next steps. We'll be receiving comments from the public until July 12th. The presentation materials are available for your review on the project website. We will summarize the comments and responses and post them to the project website. Any personal information will be removed from the comments we receive before being posted on the website. Instruction expect is expected to start in two years, pending approvals, including budget and overall construction coordination. The timing for the project will be confirmed closer to the construction. I would like to thank you for attending this presentation. Please direct any inquiries to the city's project manager, Awesome Belluck. His information is listed on the screen uh, below. Thank you. And for this now, I guess we will open up to questions.
questions. Amen. Uh, yes, sir. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, just a quick uh, question slash comment. Uh, Elm Grove resident, resident here for a long time. I feel like the corners of Elm Grove Avenue where it meets Winona are too narrow. Uh, I've had my car hit several times because people turning as they turn traveling uh, towards Scott Street on Winona when they turn during the winter time, those two those two corners are so congested with pedestrian traffic and snow and ice buildup because of the poor drainage that combined with the fact that it's a slope down, the drivers always swing wide. Uh, I was just wondering if I can get any feedback on that, please. Um, yeah, so we are actually, Elm Grove itself is only 6.7 meters in width. So we are widening it to seven meters because it's substandard itself. Also, we, we are removing parking on Winona between Elm Grove and Ashton because you have cars parked there. It's harder to make the turn itself. Also in Elm Grove, I agree, it's a very steep slope. So part of the design is we flattened it out a little bit to uh, make it more manageable. Um, as part of our design too, is we designed it so that large trucks such as garbage trucks can make the turn from Elm Grove on Winona without tracking onto the opposite laneway itself. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, this next question is Judy. Um, my question is, what do you mean by trench reestatement on Picton? Okay, so on say Winona, what we do is called full road reconstruction. So we basically rip off almost from property line to property line, scoop it up and put it all new. So Picton Avenue, uh, and that we do that because we're replacing the sewers, the water main, all the services and the roads in poor shape. And we want to replace the sidewalks. On Picton Avenue wasn't part of the original scope of work, but it was the water main was added because it's about 100 years old. Um, so we're replacing the water main on Picton Avenue itself. So we're just replacing the water main and the services. So we're going to dig down, replace the water main and the services, um, and build the road back up in those uh, narrow trenches, which we require for put installing it. And then after it's done, we're going to shave two inches off the road of the top asphalt and repave the asphalt. So when we're done, it's going to look like the rest of the job. It's called trench reinstatement because we're not ripping out from property line to property line. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, James Hayes. Hi there. Um, yeah, first of all, um, it, I think again, overall, my personal opinion, it looks pretty good. Design for I, I'm sp I'm a resident on Winona, so uh, from my perspective, it seems uh, uh, pretty good. I'm glad to see that you've moved the one uh, speed hump closer to Scott on the north side of Ashton. Um, I think that's a, a, a better position. Uh, my one question, or I guess I have two questions, one about the street design and then one about the sewers. Um, is it possible for um, also to have, um, so right now there's a raised cr crosswalk at, at basically Elm Grove. Yes, that one right there. Is it possible to have like the equivalent or some other traffic calming measure on the north side of Elm Grove? Just because I find uh, cars will come down uh, Whitby which is the opposite of Elm Grove. So mm -hmm. we'll come down Whitby and turn left onto Winona pretty, I, I know there's a stop sign there, but they come around the corner pretty quick and just, you know, kind of uh, make their way towards Scott. So I guess that's just the one addition I'd be looking for. So can you be this, more specific, the race crosswalk across Whitby? Uh, no, across Winona. Or I mean, it could be would be. I was thinking Winona because I find that's the this that's where they're speeding. So like, yes, across. Uh, yeah, like exact or yes, exactly like where you have your mouse there. Okay, so uh, I'll give a little history on this. Originally, we were supposed to do a raised intersection on Elm Grove right. itself. Yep. This couldn't be done due to the slope on Elm Grove. It would exasperate the situation and make it that much worse. Um, 
So that was removed from the project itself, uh, just because it, it wouldn't work. Uh, that slope, twice. yeah. That's correct. Um, for The problem is, is where the stop bar is here and where you would have a race crossing, it's not the best location, but we'll definitely take that uh, comment and we'll uh, look at it uh, internally with the city and uh, get back to you on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be a race crosswalk. I was just some other traffic coming i mean i see the little bump out there as well so. we have to remember that this here now is only be seven meters wide right so with that yep. the bump out here you're looking at uh six meters with two cars coming it's gonna be quite yep. difficult to speed in this session it's gonna yes. be very constricted yes yeah no i again i i think overall for me from my perspective went on a, it's a big improvement from what's here today uh, the second question I just had regarding the sewers is, so the sanitar sanitary and uh, water lines are going to be replaced up to the homeowner's um, uh, service. And is there any, um, uh, just because this is going to be the first time I've lived through a project like this, is there any kind of recourse or anything for potential damage to the homeowner in the sense of like a, you know, water, uh, sewer backing up during the process or something going wrong during the construction that causes like something, uh, you know, flooding in the yeah. homeowner's house. And unfortunately that does happen. So I'll explain what we do is uh, before construction occurs, we go out and we take pre-construction pictures of everything. We're talking thousands of pictures and videos, of everything. So we know exactly what's there beforehand, especially on private property. So when a contractor comes, contractor has, has their insurance and they're responsible for any damage that occurs. So for some odd reason, they uh, have their shovel, they track over on private property on your driveway and damage it, they have to replace it at their cost. If during construction, there is a sewer backup in your basement, they're liable, they have to clean it and fix it at their cost. So any damage that occurs during construction, that's a contractor's fault they will repair it through their insurance. Okay. And when there is damage, uh, what occurs typically is we will have an inspector on site, a CA, and awesome as the uh, city project manager is, typically the resident will send us the information that they've uh, occurred damage, and we would uh, contact the contractor and engage them to fix the issue. Okay. I do have a third uh, question. You also don't have to worry that you have to do this on your own, James. If for any reason there is something that is happening on your property that is damaged, you bring it to my attention and I'll make sure that uh, the contractor rectifies the problem. All right. Thank you. Uh, I do have a third question, but if you want to move along to someone else oh. and then come back to me, that's fine. No, you can go with your third one. We're good. Uh, question about Ashton. I can see that it's only, if, you know, a, I don't know, whatever, 20 meters or so that's being. Um, developed there um just again uh you know a mail there are community mailboxes basically at the end of ashton where ashton connects to uh, lions park and there are two large developments uh planned one at the uh, granite curling club and then one at the, the the properties adjacent to the granite curling club um i'm just wondering if now is not the time to also put um uh the sidewalks in on ashton again you know we're walking we send our kids to get the mail they, they down ashton uh with those two big developments coming is now not the time to put those sidewalks in um so for ashton we're not doing any underground work um we just have to tie into our our new underground work going on into ashton so we're just going a couple meters out just to smooth out the asphalt that we're at damage for construction so that may be in a future project where they come and replace the water main on Ashton and they may wait for the developer to do that. So currently it's outside our scope of work to go into Ashton and put sidewalks into the road because the water main still needs to eventually be replaced. Okay, yeah, again, I just wanted to reiterate those two massive towers that are going in there. Uh, so that's gonna to lead to construction traffic, whatever. Again, I don't know where the construction traffic is gonna be routed. And then when they're done, uh, you know, there'll be more vehicular traffic as well. Yeah, so. and they probably will damage the road during construction. So we are aware of the two developments and we did approach uh, uh, the city uh, to inform them of these developments and the age of the war main. But the city has 
uh, compared to most other municipalities, have, has a fantastic asset management branch where they're aware of all the needs and wants of the city and they have a certain budget to play with and they go with it. And at this current time with development happening uh, on Ashton itself, uh, they've decided that uh, that will be part of the scope of the work. Okay. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, next, I'm just going to sequential order. So I'm sorry if someone raised their hand before, but I have no idea how I do, could determine that. So Eric, Michael. Hi, uh, thanks very much um, for the presentation. Um, I am a Wilmont resident and um, again, your overall plan looks uh, appropriate. Um, I had two questions, one regarding the um, the water main replacement. Uh, I am in one of the houses that still has lead into the house. Um, and we are, we have had it tested so far. Everything's like at zero. I'm not even within a safe limit because there really isn't one uh, with lead. Um, but uh, I am wondering in terms of arranging said contractor to replace the line, I'd rather do that at the sort of a similar time because why rip up the entire yard twice? Um, because there is a good portion of, of the property line, uh, as you can see, um, uh, of the actual front yard that is part of the city's property. Um, and so doing that landscaping would be out of pocket for us. Um, is there some way that the city can help coordinate with possibly the contractor on site that while some of those expenses come from the homeowner, um, that we could time it so that that work can be done at the same, at the same time, uh, rather than trying to find one of the independent contractors who I've spoken with in the past when I was getting estimates. Um, so it strikes me as complicated for me is. to. I've been doing this for over 20 years. When I first started doing integrated road jobs, uh, maybe 50% of the contractors would be willing to do the work on private property to have a little bit extra work. Um, probably about 10 years ago, it's changed. And it's basically the number is about 0% of contractors who bid this work will do work on private property due to the limited amount of money to make from it. And the biggest thing is the risk, the, da the risk of damage to the house um, and dealing with the residents. So in the last 10 years, I've had zero contractors willing to do that type of work on private property. That's pretty frustrating. Um, just because as well, the, you know, it's, it's, well, I understand, you know, property line becomes the homeowner's responsibility. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a decision that was done any time recently, <laughs> even the owners of this property, you know, before I acquired it 15 years ago, didn't choose to have lead piping in there. And I think, you know, I, again, I know you guys are not those just uh, responsible for deciding who is responsible for replacing and paying for the lead pipes. Um, it's just something that maybe should be brought up forward. I don't know, Jeff, if that's something maybe um, that can be discussed on a sort of more council level as well. Um, and then the other question I had was for Wilmont specifically was um, as we, as you're probably also aware, there's a p massive potential development going in on the Fendor property, um, and which is also supposed to exit uh, one of their garage plans at the moment exits right just to the west or east of your speed hump, um, as well as my, the concern of, again, you know, the city uh, with our tax money replaces a road, great. That's what we want. That's what we pay our taxes for. And then develop private developers come in with heavy equipment and damage that asphalt, um, much like we've seen throughout the Westboro um, with regards to infill where cuts are made into the road. Um, and it's never put back the same way that it was done by the city's contractor originally. Um, I can point immediately right now to a cut in on Churchill about uh, at Avondale, um, which is in dire, um, which is in, like in dire shape at the moment. So anyway, um, just wondering what your what your plan is to deal with sort of that that future construction and, and maybe the timing of the project as such. Okay, um, I'll throw my city hat back on. I worked at the city for twelve years, so I uh, dealt with this issue a few times while I worked at the city. Um, 
they used to be for the trench uh, cuts uh, for the services stuff for development. The inspection of that, uh, there was something happening on enough inspectors confirming that it has been done, that there was definitely issues back then. I know prior to myself leaving the city about five years ago, uh, it, the city did make it a priority to, to up the inspection to ensure that it was uh, reinstated properly. Um, there's that case. And also if the contractor damages the sidewalk panels or the road uh, for their construction, they'll be liable to uh, fix the damage that has occurred. I think the perfect example is right next to my house, a resident uh, put in a pool and the contractor damaged the sidewalks and he replaced them. So the city does inspect it, that now and it, the onus is on the contractor if he does damage it to replace it. And it might, and it will seem like a waste of money, but the city will come along now and we'll say, we're gonna build all this. And then the contractors can cut into a brand new sidewalk to do their depressions for, for whatever they need to do, but they have to reinstate what we have. We can't hold on to not doing the project till development occurs. So we have to go in and do what our plan is. And when the developer comes in to do their work, they have to match in what we have and they have to do their match and has to be approved uh, from the development services and they have to repair any damage that does occur. I hopefully answered the question. Yeah, I just, I mean, it was just more a question of the timing um, that, yeah. you know, I, and again, I, we don't even have clarity on the timing of that development either, um, but uh, just, you know, yeah. no point in spending money twice, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So it's, only paying taxpayers money once the developers uh, responsible for any damage. That's their money. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's only once. And back to your question on the lead service is uh, the city has changed the process in which it's, I think compared to other municipalities, quite good. It's the city will uh, will help the homeowner on the cost of the replacement, lead pipe replacement on their private property, which council agreed to a few years ago. I think it's a thousand dollars per house. So it's a pretty good deal uh, for homeowners who do have lead pipes that the city will help them pay some of the cost. Yeah, it's all it's all it's uh, it's all right. My estimate was five thousand yeah. dollars, and uh, the 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 um, the te the main cutoff is um, about one foot from my house or from the front steps of my house, um, and they have about honestly they have six feet of distance to travel which is an awful lot of money for four, for, for, for four grand. So yeah, which, sorry, uh, five. So. Yeah, which I completely agree anyway. with, but I guess the issue you arise is you have all these construction projects going on and should a resident who doesn't live here help pay for the cost of their plate replacement for all the re other residents. So I think the city's come with a good opinion of helping out a little bit, um, but as a homeowner, if I owned it, you would always hope for more. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think next one is Christine Carlson. Hi, it's actually Gordon, her husband. She's uh, listening in. Okay. Um, we live on the corner of Winona and Elm Grove. Um, I'm just, my question is about the sidewalk and how close to the property, lo property line you are actually going to be cutting and digging down. Um, as you know, there's uh, in Westboro, there are a lot of buildings that uh, extend over the current property lines, but uh, they may not have been uh, many years ago. We have a deck uh, which is resting on a wall, uh, which is over the current uh, city property line. Um, so I'm just wondering what would we do with that deck? We are about three and a half feet over the uh, current property line. And the deck is actually the deck is actually resting on a, a concrete wall that extends well below grade, um, and I don't know when that wall was was there, but it's it, it's it's existing still. And that's what's your address, sir? Uh, 357 Winona. It's that long building right on the corner of Winona and Elm Grove. Southeast corner. 348, so it applies at that. 354. 357, yeah, it's across the street from there. I mean, the south side or, oh, this building here? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually okay. the, that's actually the east side. Okay. 
Um, so the sidewalk, as you see right here, the property yep. line is way back here. So we're, we're going to be roughly two meters for the property line, the back of the sidewalk. Uh, two, okay, so my deck is okay? Yes. So, so when you do the sidewalk, uh, you're not going to be digging down much uh, below grade for the sidewalk? Uh, typically the, maybe a half a meter. So most of the deep digging is going to be on the actual road. On the sewers themselves, uh, sewers and water mains, um, except for your services themselves. But I think you are serviced from Elm Grove. For like two we weeks. are for the water yeah. Yeah. and yeah, and gas as well. Yeah, because I remember I walked it uh, with Awesome, I think a couple of weeks ago, and your valve is right here in newly paved that's, driveway. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately, the newly paved driveway will have a trench on it. Uh, what do you think? The, our, where's, where's the trench going to be? Well, you, this is all newly paved, so we uh, the city replaces the wire service to your property line. But oh. I think, oh, so I, you're going to have to cut through the driveway? Correct. Uh, just the trench? You're going to cut down uh, like a couple feet down? Um, yeah, so typically what we'll do is uh, if the wire service is 2.4 meters cover. So you'll have a whole uh, ankle in the bottom of the gray area. So you're about 2.7 meters from the surface is how deep the hole will be. Uh, okay, that's unfortunate because the driveway is fairly new. <laughs> yes, I know. We'll, uh, we'll clean cut it across uh, okay. horizontally. So uh, it, will, it won't look as bad. So you'll only have one line straight across on your driveway. Okay, so my deck is okay. I don't have to do anything with the deck. That's correct, sir. We uh, walked it uh, with Forrester, and uh, you're 100 percent no issue with your deck. I have one other uh, one other question. Somebody else mentioned it regarding the uh, traffic through going north and south uh, through uh, along Winona mm -hmm. and Elm Grove. I've been working outside quite a bit, and there are a lot of cars. I'd I'd say most cars don't stop at the stop signs. There's now a four way stop there. Mm -hmm. Most cars do not stop. Some cars do not even pause and they just drive right through the stop sign. So I don't know if there's anything you can do about that. You mentioned you, you're uh, putting a raised intersection is out of the question because of drainage and whatnot. I just, thought, I just thought I'd mention that there's a lot of cars speeding through that intersection. And it's just by luck that someone hasn't been hit because they speed, actually some of them go right through the other one as well. Yeah, so if you're coming from, uh, if you're driving west, you have a raised intersection to hit, so you're up and then down, and you have a stop sign here, you have another crosswalk, crosswalk here that's raised, you're up that's raised. and then down, you stopped here. And then when you hit this area, I'm not sure, I'm sure everyone's driven it, but uh, driven narrow roadways, but a seven meter roadway is very narrow. And you have those uh, pinch points right here, so that will slow them down. It'll slow down. So this whole roadway was designed for 30 kilometers an hour. So that is the speed that you could drive this and feel okay. Above that speed limit, you start feeling uneasy due to the traffic cone measures. Yeah. Oh, no, that's correct, uh, Daryl. And, and we're hearing that concern quite often when we do work in some of those local neighborhoods. And uh, and that's why you see these the design in front of you with, with those narrow streets, the sidewalks on both sides, with all those ball belts. This is meant to provide the visual constraint to drivers, so it doesn't look as much as a long, wide tunnel vision. It will change quite drastically the sight line for driver, which will actually automatically reduce the speed. So it will surely be interesting to hear uh, if there's any further issues after construction about speeding, then city can, city can surely further look into it. But uh, with the design we have here, with typically what we've seen, we see so far is it, it does a great deal in, in reducing traffic speed in those neighborhoods for sure. Oh, okay. So with the, uh, as Luke was saying, we have a pinch point right here. So this is six meters wide. A typical lane is 3.5 meters on a roadway. Your typical car is about two and a half. So if you have another car coming this way that has to come into the center lane here, you're slowing down to maybe 10 kilometers an hour thinking you're gonna crash into it. So you'll it'll be a lot of friction when you're driving and it will slow down traffic because you won't feel safe driving fast. And if you have a nice car, you don't wanna bottom out on the speed humps or race intersections. 
after we've constructed those assets, we get complained about uh, I have to slow down. I can't drive and get to, to school on time and stuff. And well, which is kind of funny because it's kind of what we want to achieve, <laughs> make it a bit more difficult to, to bump through and slow traffic down. So, so we know it's working. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, was it, were there any other questions? I think uh, George has had his hand up for a while. Sorry. Okay, I see that now. Sorry, George. Yeah, there he is. Sorry. Um, I'm on the uh, corner of uh, Elm Grove and Winona, across from Gord, who just spoke. Popper I'm spot. Just, I'm just an awkward spot. It's a popular spot. Well, oh. uh, it's pretty good showing in the winter when you watch people try and negotiate that hill. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't even pay for better uh, fun than that watch. So uh, you're right not to put a uh, raised roadway between... Uh, at that uh, right-hand turn coming out of uh, Elm Grove um, because they can't get up the hill as is. So I wanted to know what the height of that hill is anticipated to be uh, leveled out to, if anything. Well, I uh, may as well go to the drawings, huh? Because I do not remember specifics like that. I mean, so, what is it now and what is it yeah. going to? Yeah. I'm gonna give it to you in percentages. Well, that fits the Tour de France. Okay. Well, it's not to, it's not the one to one scale, right? It's a different scale. So it yeah. does, well, it looks worse than it's actually going to be. It's exaggerated. Yeah. So, like, the, each bump down here is a meter, and each bump this way is, is uh, five meters. So it, it's a, exaggerated. But if you see right here, that dash line right here is the existing ground itself. So it goes okay. down quickly and it levels off. So we're taking some of that off. So we're going to raise it up a bit this way and keep it going straight. Okay. So there, we're limited to what we can do. And one of the limitations is actually your property itself. Because we rate, we take that buff out too much. The surface flow uh, from the uh, storm event, would, we could not capture it. And we're just going to your property itself. So it, we it were, does right now anyway, because the... Uh collection processes are uh, misaligned from an engineering standpoint. Yeah. And, uh, and that, and yeah. So that water on a, on a heavy rain comes down that thing like the Ganges in a typhoon. Yeah. And doesn't collect anything. It just runs right by it all. Yeah. And ends yeah. up in Lake Titicaca in front of the infills that went in. Sorry for the humor, but what the hell? It's dry enough. <laughs> Fair enough. So... One aspect you have is the wire would come down on my own itself and whip, the, and whip down here. So we have a, with a raised, what's going to help you for the surface drainage, with a raised crosswalk, the wire can't go over this. We drain the two catch basins here. So now you're only looking at a collection area from starting from here. We are installing new, two new catch basins on both sides here uh, with proper cross uh, fall on the road. So that captures the water there. So then the only wire that's going to whip down here is the wire from this intersection itself. So you have a new CB that's installed here, and we're trying to promote the wire to keep going down the line itself. Yeah, because um, right, right now it comes down Whitby in full force, yeah. does a little bit of a swing across almost the center of Elm Grove, yeah. and, and then right down the road to be in front of the co-op area and in front of the uh, infill area. Yeah. So the basin that is that is on the left side should probably one of those dugout uh, collector type things to take the force of the water if it's still coming down in that direction. Yeah. If so, you think it's going in a different direction, then I'll leave it to you guys. Yeah, we uh, we spent more time on this intersection for grading than the rest of the job combined. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, and we've uh, put it all to. Uh, gutter inlets, I said curb inlets, to increase the capture rate on this location itself. Good, good. Yeah. Okay, uh, now the next question was to, with respect to that other slide and the property lines. The white line is the property line, correct? That's correct. Okay, and that road now on Elm Grove is outlined by the black lines. That's what the road will, will the width will be, correct? Correct. What happens to the property on the left side of that black line to the property line. Does that stay the same? 
That's correct. We are in state to existing conditions. Okay, so that will remain because I have some uh, desires to do some landscaping and uh, I'm not going to spend the money if that's taken away. No, and your service for there is... Uh, you're serviced off of Winona. It's on Winona, I believe. Yeah, you're serviced right here off of Winona. Correct. So we won't be digging in your property except for the curb. Ah, okay. Now, the third question is, when the water is put in, what sort of time delay in getting service from taps is expected, usually? Okay, so what basically occurs is the first thing that happens on the on a construction project like this is what we call a temporary water. So the contractor will lay out all this uh, fire hose, they'll fill it up, uh, they'll chlorinate it, they test to make sure it's potable. And then what they do is they start, uh, they lay out the hoses themselves so you can attach the property. So most houses will have an outside hose bib they can just screw in. If not, then they might install an outside hose bib and that's not, can't be done. They will dig down to your wire service itself and bring up your wire service. So then they would cut, uh, they would pressurize that with sea water. They make their final kind of caps to isolate the system itself and then hook up everyone with the temporary water. So typically it's happen it happens during the day and you might be out without water for about four to five hours, but you're going to receive a couple of notices before that happens. Okay. Now that begs another interesting question since it was brought up by a fellow earlier. If you're already digging that up to connect the temporary situation, uh, wouldn't we be wise to get the lead piping if there is any? I don't know if there is any on my property because... This place was redone in 2007, and I wonder, would they have touched the piping then or not at all? I'm not sure, but your property line is basically the face of your building. Um, let me just confirm here. Yeah, so for your, uh, your building is actually slightly on city property. So, and your standpost is right at your building face. So the contract is going to be going to your building face to replace it. So after the work is done, it's basically the piping inside your house. Ah, good. Then that answers that question. I thought it was going to be pretty well mostly your responsibility, but I just want to confirm that. Yeah, your stand post is, uh, shows right on the side of your house. Yeah, that's where that property line goes down, which yeah. I found out later, <laughs> but interesting. Okay, um, other than that, I think the design is fairly good. Uh, uh, Gord is correct about the... Uh, need for calming going up and down that road. And I think the bumps and everything will do well to uh, assist with that. Now, the only other thing I was thinking about is why isn't Whitby being touched? Because that's outside our scope. Ah, okay. That's gonna be for a future project. So the city typically bundles a bunch of streets into one package. They can't make it too big because uh, it's too large of a job and too expensive uh, to design and construct later on. So they typically have uh, a linear meter that they want to go to a maximum of for projects like this. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. One, one, one thing I'd like to add, just back to your question about how much work behind the black lines, uh, it, it's not like the excavation will stop right on the line, you know, typically like half a meter to meter behind the black line, whether it's behind the ridge of road or behind the sidewalk. I mean, there's just the room they need to construct, to do the form work for the concrete, the grounder is compacting, and, and then there's a bit of a tie up that is done with the landscaping. So, so typically. Okay. So, but so, so. Maybe I shouldn't uh, invest in any uh, landscaping in that front area right now until that's done. Yeah, and we're also widening the roadway there by 0 0.3 a meter, so 300 right. meters. Um, so that would be on your side also. That's correct. Um, and as uh, Luke was saying, which is very correct, is you have the top of the asphalt, but the granules beneath it go farther than the top of asphalt for a road structure itself. So. A good rule of thumb is roughly a meter past the curb. And for you, maybe 1.5, because we're uh, winding the road away, is where our construction will end. So 1.5 meters inside that black line is going to be used? Approximately. Okay. Yeah, it's a, rough, it's a good rough figure. Um, if, if you're looking at planning and it works uh, in, in that um, city right, right, right away along, then yeah, staying away from a meter and a half from that black line is 
bring a bad thing, uh, or even better is wait that the actual work is completed. That might be a better option. Yeah, and now the, and the whole property down that Winona side towards Ashton is still remaining as is, correct? That's correct, but on this main stretch yeah. of Winona, yeah. we have the services that come in. So these services are two, yes. our trench is going to be about 2.6 yes. meters deep and probably about three meters wide. Right, that's fine. For the and water and sanitaries. And the final thing I forgot was to reiterate, there will be no parking on Winona, both sides. That's correct, between That's correct. and open areas. Okay, so there won't be any cars on there parked, it'll just strictly be flow. That's correct. Good. Okay, that's me done, thank you. Perfect, is there anyone else I missed for questions? Oh, hi. Uh, uh, this is Dave Orsava from uh, 376 Winona. So you can keep your image there too. Okay. Um, it's just a Winona party. Um, so uh, I just have three quick questions. One is on Elm Grove. I noticed that uh, it's on the, what is it? The south side that you guys have the, the sidewalk, but on the, the other side, it is that's where the mailbox is, which I know that people are gonna sort of, I mean, right now people get to the mailbox without any sidewalk, so it's probably fine. And that street is not like crazy busy. But I'm just wondering if there was any consideration about, you know, because I, I, I would imagine now that there's no crosswalk there. So people are going to be walking on that sidewalk and they're not going to be doing it at the sidewalk. They're going to be jaywalking over. I know I will be. So um, just that sort of consideration. But um, So typically for the city of Iowa, their policy is we put sidewalk on one side of the road on a residential street, mm -hmm. uh, especially on a dead end street like this. So uh, it wasn't part of our scope of work to look at a sidewalk on the other side of the Elm Grove. Why not be more of a collector road uh, connecting two major arterial roads? That's why there's a sidewalk on both sides. But mm -hmm. typically on a, a residential road like Elm Grove, the sidewalk would only be installed on one side. Mm -hmm. okay. Daryl, uh, why on the side that doesn't have the CMB? Why not put the sidewalk on the side that does have the CMB? Um, because on the sidewalks on this side too, there's a community center down here, and it's viewed that that's where the traffic comes down. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's not like it, I don't think there's going to be any accidents there. It's not that busy of a road or anything like that. Um, but yeah, uh, the other question, I just, it, I'm assuming it's a, just a quick no, but I always remember from when they were digging up Elgin. And they weren't going to do the power lines and then because it was too expensive and then they ended up doing the power lines but it is very expensive i assume that for this one that's outside of scope that we're still going to have the power lines above ground that, that is correct yeah um and then the last question that i have is um for a lot of the drains during the winter like they get covered up by the snow plows so i'm wondering sort of if you know they're obviously very old drains or at least they look sort of very old um so I'm just wondering if like, I'm assuming that there's some sort of engineering design to improve that somehow or different sort of placement. Cause right now, a lot of them, like the one closest to our house is like right where people park, but that's just also the area where it's in the middle of sort of an area where um, the snow plow really puts a lot of snow and there's no way that you can keep it clear sort of at all. Like I tried to sort of in the early parts of the winter and then I just give up. Uh, and then it just, the water just kind of collects sort of at specific points in people's driveways until it melts enough. So just during the freeze thaw. So I'm assuming that those drains are being replaced, but I'm just not sure what the plan is for that overall. So it's a complete road re uh, reconstruction. So we are ripping out everything, including the CBs. We are protecting the majority of the storm sewers. We're reconnecting this to the existing storm sewer. Mm -hmm. um, on this project itself, just to do to underground utilities, uh, typically we install curb inlets because we prefer the uh, catch basins outside the roadway in the sidewalk itself. Mm -hmm. Due to the gas main and water main and stuff like that, it was not a possibility. So if your uh, drainage issue is what the issue is for you is to be the best of the both worlds is that the catch basin itself will be a gutter inlet. So that's as good as it gets for collecting uh, mm. water during a freeze thaw period. That being said, is there's no engineering solution for frozen mm. yeah. catch basins or frozen mounts of snow on top of catch basin. Mm. You just have to wait to melt. Like it's uh, yeah, it's nothing can be done. We're installing more catch basins than existing, um, so that'll be improvement that way. 
you'll have a better cross slope on the roadway. So IE, instead of having a flat road and just collects on the road itself, you have a nice 3% cross fall. So mm. it'll promote the water to go towards a curb itself. Mm. Um, so it'll keep their laneways uh, free. The side, you'll have the sidewalks on both sides. So at least to be elevated from any water there itself. And there'll be the five inch curb face. So that'll protect you from the water, but there's no engineering solution for frozen catch basins or big mounds of snow on top of the catch basin, unfortunately. But cool. it'll be way, way better than it is now. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Is there any more questions? I just don't sure who has additional ones. It looks like uh, David has his hand up next. Oh, that was David right now. I'll put oh, uh, sorry, uh, in that case, we got uh, Eric. Yeah, I just yeah. had uh, one quick follow up question. Um, regarding lead pipe replacement, are we allowed, sorry, two questions, uh, but they're quick. Um, uh, lead placement, re- sorry, the lead pipe replacement into the house, are contractors allowed to work on that at the same time? Or does that have to be scheduled at a different time? such that it doesn't interfere with the road work. And then the second question is on Wilmont. Um, There's no south side um, sidewalk, but is there a raised curb? Because currently it's sort of a flush curb with the grass like and the the road. That's it, thanks. We'll start with a second question first, that's easiest. So currently you have a manable curb, it'll be replaced with a barrier curb. So it'd be a raised curb face itself uh, on the south side of the roadway. Um, as far as the lead uh, replacement of your lead pipes is, um, we cannot have two contractors working in the city of, of each other because that's in contravention of the construction bylaw. Um, and then the, the main contractor will be responsible for your, the smaller contractors or any damage or any injuries. So that contractor will not permit a smaller contractor to do work on the lead service itself. That being said is if we award the contract and the contractors on Winona uh, and not on Wilmot itself, they'll have no problems with the contractor coming in and replacing it. But if they're digging the pipes down Wilmot and your contractor wants to replace the lead pipe while they're right in front of your house, they will not allow that. So the, the short answer is whether you do it before the city project or after the city project is done perfectly before, uh, uh, or, uh, as I think it was asked earlier, uh, can we have the city contractor do the work? It's possible. And I know there's a, a trend for the city, the only general contractor, the heavy civil work guys to not undertake much private work, but it, it's, it depends who, who gets the contract. It might be an option. They may be interested to entertain some of those uh, service, but I know for Mr. Ree, uh, the trend seems to be on the low side. They don't seem to be too much keen to, to take on those contracts. So. But it's, it's always an option. But ideally, uh, beforehand, I would do it before the extortion happens, as Luke would said. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we got uh, Judy, then Christine. Okay, perfect. Judy. Um, my question. So it's so all the residents know because I know Jeff and Tom do. I I don't live on the street, but I'm the executive director of the BIA, and I actually work on Picton. That's where our offices are. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was wondering if you know if the timing of this project is going to line up with the large project that's happening at Winona and Richmond. Um, I last I checked for the development of this property parcel right here. They didn't have a year when they're gonna start. Um, and I find it suspect when a developer says they're gonna construct next year. I did the work on Males Avenue, which is not too far from here. And the contractor that was that's now building the big condo towers said they're gonna start construction the same year we were gonna do construction. They started three years after the fact. So I take everything with a grain of salt when a contractor says you're gonna start the work. Um, that being said, at Scott and Winona, their middle construction is a big hole in there. So we do uh, contact the developer. They are aware of when we're proposing construction, and they are aware that once our contract is on site, it limits their ability to do the work from our construction zone itself. Um, so currently, we are scheduled to commence construction in 2024. Um, it's a two-year project, and typically what we'll do before tender is we'll speak to uh, developers, stuff like that, to figure out what's happening and stuff, because 
we do have a two year window to construct it and we have two separate streets to go. So if we knew that the contractor is starting to work next year here in Richmond and Winona, and it'll be done in uh, 2024, we could put in our contracts to, to, for bidding purposes that the contractor can't do any work uh, east of Elm Grove and Winona itself. So we do look at all that information prior to construction to try to minimize impact on developers. Um, and what was your first question, sorry? Well, I was just letting, I feel I want to be transparent with the neighbors that I don't live on, on Winona, but I, I work on Picton. So, um, and then the only restrictions on parking on Winona are coming in that one block and there isn't any other changes. And it's also, um, so here's a raised intersection. You can't park right beside it. So it'll be a little bit past it. Same with the raised crosswalk, be a little bit past it. Um, no parking on this stretch right here, it's too narrow and no parking within the vicinity of the speed hump itself. So there are gonna be some restrictions to it, um, but mainly is within the vicinity of any traffic calming and then on the stretch between Ashton and Elm Grove. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, is Christine next? Yeah, my question is similar to Judy's. So I'm just wondering about the parking on Winona between Elm Grove and Churchill. Right now, it's only on the west side of Elm Grove, and I'm wondering if that's going to continue, or are you going to also allow it on the east side? Um, the parking will still remain on the same side. Um, the only difference what we're doing is there'll be no parking west of this location to uh, Ashton down here, where the speed hump is here, and within the vicinity of this raised intersection. But the parking where it is now will remain. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Ken? Sorry, it's his wife, Leah. Um, hi, Leah. Hi. Uh, I just had, so I'm, we're closer to Scott and on the further side on Winona, but we're closer to the Scott side. Um, and I was just talking to one of my neighbors just quickly. And ever since the lights went in, we've noticed this too, but we didn't bring it up. But ever since the lights went in at the corner of uh, Churchill and Scott, and uh, Jeff will remember, I've asked him about this before because Winona seems to be a little bit of a, a, a quick, like Short shortcut for people when they're coming home and driving down Scott and whenever there was congestion before the lights. And now it's increased like tenfold in the last, ever since the lights went up, it's just people are constantly just gunning down the street. And I know we've talked about the raised sidewalks and that possibly slowing people, people down. But I don't think um, my neighbor beside me, Lucy's on the call, but we had talked about possibly exploring something again um, that would slow down traffic just near that intersection. Like, so we know the development's going up there and mm -hmm. then we have a corner right across the street. But if there's like in your experience, maybe you can shed some light on this. Has the raised sidewalks actually slowed traffic down? Um, like, will it slow it down or is there another mechanism or measure that we could explore around that area to put there just to, that would be acceptable by the city to put there to slow traffic down somewhere because it's, they're fast, like it's, they're zooming down. Um, yeah, so we, there's different possibilities you, you could look at, which we did look at, and you look at uh, trying to narrow the intersection down to slow them down and stuff, but the issue I have with trying to narrow intersection is you still need to have a vehicle such as a dump truck be able to make that turn without coming into incoming traffic. So we looked at that for this intersection itself. So there, there was not a possibility to narrow that any more than it is now. Um, so for this intersection, having this large raised uh, cross uh, ride, raised cross session itself, it will slow down traffic because it's uh, 80 mils high. So you come up here, you have the stop, like you have to slow down to go up and go back down. Um, I've seen cars, I just built a bunch on Claymore uh, Avenue near a school, uh, Claymore and Velez. And if you do not slow down, you do bottom out your car. Um, and that's the same thing for the speed hump. So unfortunately there's, We've maximized the amount that we could do for installing a traffic colony while still having traffic being able to use the road and also park on the road itself. So 
it's you will see a drastic change after you've done construction of traffic flowing down. And I can say that from first hand from my Fluorescent Claymore job, which just was completed last year, because mm -hmm. uh, I was really concerned about uh, the elementary school, it does slow it down. Okay, okay, no, thanks. I just thought, you know, I wanna at least put it out there for consideration again. Um, and there's just another question because I missed it earlier, but if we could, uh, if the, you could share the slide again with, um, I, I don't think I'm gonna pronounce his name right, but it seems uh, contact information. Awesome, uh, most definitely. It, Thanks, that'd be great. Thanks so much. Uh, Leah, um, just yeah. a quick question. Have you noticed any difference in the traffic patterns since the no left went in on Richmond at Churchill? Uh, oh, you're seeing at Churchill and... Yeah, so what was happening, we were getting, because they changed the markings at Churchill and Richmond, Churchill yeah. was getting badly backed up. Um, yeah. So like yesterday afternoon, I went out and now that there's a no left at Churchill, Richmond, Churchill, Richmond is flowing quickly. And okay. then like there's big gaps on Churchill. So all the folks on Madison, for example, can start getting out now. So I okay. suspect it's worth people's time to wait for the single light cycle and then mm -hmm. go up Churchill in order to get to Richmond. Um, I, I, if you see, I, I was, I'm just curious if you've noticed any difference since that light or that no left went active uh, maybe three days ago. Yeah, I haven't noticed, but what I'll do is over the next couple of days before, cause I know our due date is July 12th to provide feedback. I'll make that like an undertaking for myself to kind of look at that over the next little bit because i'm working from home okay. um and just to see if there's a difference in flow so in conjunction with our neighbors i think we'll team up and just kind of see what our what we've noticed and then report back yeah um, and then i'll day. we should take a look at that on saturday afternoon too because with bike days things get silly and the eastbound uh, scott has reopened too so yeah, yeah. um one other uh, question. Um, sorry, uh, Leah, you, you just raised a point. I don't want to uh, forget. Uh, Leah mentioned that uh, um, comments are due July 12th. That seems really early. Can we, given for a project that's not going to start getting built until 2023, 2024, well, um, is there any wiggle room on that? No, Plenty of real room, uh, actually, uh, as we were going through, as uh, yeah, maybe that's a bit of a typo, uh, for sure. I mean, uh, I will say even end of September, uh, give, you know, I know I understand people are going away on vacation for most of the summer, so your head might not be right down in the weeds of this, but uh, back in September, by end of September, if you can get back to, uh, to us, uh, end of September of 2022, that will be uh, a good timing for us. That's appreciated, Luke. Thank you. I see one one hand, uh, George here. Uh, that may be from before or. Uh, Sorry, hand. guys, that was me from before. Okay, no problem. I'll try and get that off. Yeah, there we are. Does right, anyone well, have any other questions? One just came into the chat. Um, can the engineers, project managers, make the technical slides and blueprints available for download? Are they not on the website, uh, Austin? Awesome. Not the detailed design drawings yet because they haven't been approved from the city. Um, we, I'll have to talk with the city themselves to see what we can post, but uh, once we can post something, we will. And then sometimes uh, the city will use my website. Oh, except I can't communicate with residents for reasons beginning August 25th. Um, but often the city will, if, if it's because you don't have accessible versions or uh, bilingual That's versions. That's the election, right? Uh, shh. I'm not a candidate. You, this is not an opportunity for electioneering. Uh, but yeah, I, I've got a quiet, <laughs> I've got a quiet period I have to adhere to um, as, uh, as a candidate. But sometimes the city can put stuff on um, my website because I'm not subject to the same uh, accessibility yeah. rules and such. One thing we have shown there, Daryl, uh, a part of this presentation, some of the drawings or the geometry drawing, which just shows uh, not all the underground and design, but I see what what the people need to really want to see at the surface. Uh, the one with the yeah those drawings. So this uh, is on the website. Yeah, so that's available. That's on the website. And I can be consulted. And if the resident wants a specific drawing, he can uh, give awesome yeah. an email. And once approved for this by the city, uh, most likely we can send a copy of that.
we have any further questions? I think that's it. Um, I'll just say really quickly, uh, thank you very much to the residents who came out tonight. And we're going to put this up on, is this recording? Oh, it is. Okay, good. Yeah, we're recording. Yeah. Um, thanks, Tom. Uh, Tom is in my office. Tom Peckloff uh, helps me out with all of these files. Um, I, I just wanted to ask quickly, if you are providing feedback to the city, please consider copying me, uh, jeff.leeper at ottawa.ca, because um, I'm always interested in what people are saying, and um, I can try to put my thumb a little on the scale if there are things that residents uh, uh, consider important, um, if I can be of, uh, of help to influence those changes. Sometimes I can uh, help move the scale a bit. And otherwise, guys, thank you very much for uh, presenting this. Uh, residents, thank you very much for uh, coming out this evening. And uh, I hope that everyone has a great evening and uh, enjoy your Canada Day. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, you very everyone. much. Thank you, Daryl. And thank you, Councillor and Tom. And thank you all for attending this. And uh, like we we're saying earlier, if if you have any questions or comments, please send them my way and I will do my best to answer them or point you in the right direction. Amazing. Excellent. Thanks. Have a good night, all. Good night, everybody.